back to a year ago after the own four start when you when when uh, Clarendon came in what was the in your mind the single biggest difference that you noticed right away uh and with the addition of Clarendon no question about it it was leadership it was a voice uh there was such a massive void there um and we felt it in training camp um you know what we just we tried to get through it but it ended up obviously looming pretty large for us as we started the the season and that's why I think Lay was able to have such success was because it was so welcomed. And we try to tell point guards all the time that I don't care if it's 36 year old Sill uh, or, you know, 26 year old somebody, they want to hear from the PG. They, they want leadership and direction. And, and so Lay was trying to do those things on the fly. Um, but Lay just is a natural, very smart player. So very natural for, for them to step into that role. And uh, yeah, and so I thought that our team just sort of found some direction um, be, because of, of their voice. Uh, Coach, obviously with Sill and Angel, obviously they have a, a lot of experience. Mm -hmm. How much can they complement Very well each said. Other? Yes. Yeah. How can they complement each other on the court? Well, they, they know each other so well, Angel and Sill do. Um, they, they've played USA basketball for years together. Um, they're you know, their, their families are close on, you know, when you go on the USAB journeys, you know, families get close through all that. So they just have a great understanding of each other. And then as far as on the court, uh, because they do have understanding of each other, like, you know, some, some fun banter between the two of them, um, still mostly laughing at Angel. Um, and, but she understands her, you know, and so, um, but I think in terms of the synergy on the court, uh, the two of them in a, in a, in a two player game, is is uh has been pretty exciting to see and uh, they just get each other they can communicate so it's a natural fit in terms of you know if you're angel coming into a new situation having the comfort level of still next to you i think is pretty helpful uh since i have the mic i'll just continue obviously uh a couple of weeks ago you had the final four here you had practice over how cool was it to see just minnesota minneapolis be kind of the mecca of women's basketball in that way and obviously you were leading the charge with team usa yeah um you know it was years in the making um we were on the front end of things when we were uh, you know bidding to to be able to host and and so the the minnesota links were such a big part of the, the core of that presentation because of our great fan base and um of course the final four group wants to know that it's going to be a great show um and i just thought we we blew it out of the water knocked it out of the park, so to speak. Uh, I thought that the local organizing committee, the Minnesota Sports Commission, just all of it, their, their synergy together, uh, the things that they did from start to finish when, when the players arrived, um, you know, uh, going into a hangar, you know, their, their charter planes and kind of starting there, uh, red carpet. So, and the fans could be uh, up close and personal, obviously the open practices. That's long been a tradition of, of a Final Four and, I just thought there were many ways that that you know our community could get down here and connect and and um, I thought we put on a good show we, we supported it and uh, I was I was expecting exactly what we got and uh, so just you know congratulations to Wendy Blackshaw and all all those uh, on Wendy's team that that pulled this off um, I was super proud. Hey, Cheryl, Reggie Wilson. Karen How you doing, Reggie? Nice to finally meet you. You as well. Um, from what you've seen from Angel so far, how would you assess where she is and what type of impact do you see, do you see her having this year? Yeah, I think it's for, for Angel, it's new. Um, so even though you're a veteran and, and you know, you've, you've got years behind you, you're going into a new camp. And so Angel's wanting to you know, learn as quickly as she can so that she can be a leader and, and do the things that, um, that later in life that she's gotten really good at. She's a really good mentor. Um, really good voice, you know, pulling players aside and just sharing nuggets that, that she's learned along the way. Um, but I'd say at this point, um, you know, that each training camp is different, right? So, you know, you're in Vegas with Bill Lambeer, you're now in Minnesota with Cheryl Reeve. We have two different ways of, of doing things. And so you have to kind of come in, you feel new, you feel like a rookie again. And, uh, you know, she's working through those moments. And uh, I told her, ultimately, I just don't want her to think she's not a very good player when she thinks she's an excellent player when she doesn't think she's got tremendous instincts. So sometimes I say, don't worry about the play, just just go do Angel. <laughs> and that's worked for us. Uh, Cheryl, what's the minutes limit for Syl this year? Just kidding. <laughs> um, no, I wanted to compare about you talked about the sense of urgency for winning yeah. this year and how it compares to 
years past or championship seasons past in terms of really wanting to, to end the season in that manner and, and raising a trophy? Honestly, this is probably the first time since, since 2017, 2018, I think there was conversation around it. Um, you know, but I always joke now, the players didn't kind of let me know where they all were in 2018 that the band was breaking up. Um, so it probably wasn't realistic, but it really feels like the first time since those teams, uh, you know, as, as you know, we've had some, some change, changing of the guard and, you know, the names on the back of the jerseys different. And we've, we've said that the expectations have remained the same, but it, it feels like this is the first season that everyone that's involved have, has an understanding of that. Um, whereas before, you know, people kind of go, ah, oh, the Lynx win championships and they, you know, they kind of, they don't really know what it means and what it feels like. Uh, this group feels like, um, you know, they have, you know, more of a, a tangible kind of idea of what it takes. And we've been challenging that way in, in, in training camp. We want to have a better training camp than last year. We think that will really help us. But this team had a lot of success last year. And, you know, we say that, you know, we feel like a team that's, that's got a shot to contend. And we want to make sure that we maximize all that. And this group, I think um, it's palpable. Hey, Cheryl. Hi. Does having a longer schedule help maximize that, that potential that you're looking for? A longer schedule? Like 36 um, games? Oh, yeah. Um, in 90 days. Um, it's, I would say, um, you know, it, it probably doesn't matter what the number of games is. You know, so we were 22 in the bubble, you know, 30, what, 32 last year, we're 36. I just want to make sure the first six are uh, what we expect out of a Lynx training camp. And that's a tall order. You know, go look at our schedule. You know, as we've said for a while, there's, there's, no, there's no easy game. And, you know, there's some challenging moments very early um, in our season. And so we want to be a great team when we come out of training camp. We don't want to evolve into a great team. We want to be a great team that gets better. And, and that's the mission. And so, you know, um, if it's 36 games, whatever it is, I don't necessarily know that, um, you know, if you're in the lead, you know, if you have a chance to, you know, start out in a place of a position of leader, like leading the pack, then you're hanging on. You know, I guess if we don't start out well, then we'll hope for the, the longer season. I hope he. Hi, Cheryl. How are you? Uh, what was your reaction when Syl told you that she was coming back for one more ride? And just where are your expectations for her with one more year to go for a player who's meant a lot to you as a coach yeah. in your team? And so I, you know, Syl's been such a great communicator. So we've known, um, I thought it was possible that last year was her last year, last season. Um, but when we came into the exit interview, I actually, uh, it was a one-on-one. -on -one. I kicked everybody else out. It was just me and Sil. Because uh, we're not going to talk about how Sil can get better over the offseason. That's just not what we do anymore. Um, the, the conversations are very different with, with Sil. Um, and with Sil, I said to her, you don't look like a player who's ready to ride off into the sunset or that's done with basketball. And she said, I'm not. But I also know the challenges personally. You have goals in your personal life as well. And so it was, you know, where we kind of, you know, had our conversation. I knew what the plan was and that we would check in with each other and probably around November or so and, and see where we were with things. And um, yeah, she, when, whenever I said, hey, whenever you're ready, you know, there wasn't a bunch of phone calls asking. It was when you're ready, you let us know. And, um, and, and uh, so made the call and told us what her decision was. And my reaction was, I was certainly pleased, not for the obvious reasons, um, but I think I, you know, when you have a player like Syl, who is, we say she's 36, but look at her, look at it, look at a player. Like I'm going, there's still so much more. And so I'm selfish when it comes to that. Like I want great players to keep playing. Um, I'm fine with D and Sue being, you know, 46 and still playing if they can do it. Uh, Cause I love that because there's such a passion for the game and still has more to give. And I think I just wanted her to be happy and at peace uh, if she thought she was done, then I was going to be okay with that too. And I made her, uh, I made that known to her that don't feel pressure on our side. And, you know, I, we will do our very, very best if you do decide to play to give you the best team possible to, to send her out the way we all want to send her out. Um, but if not, you know, we were going to be happy for her in the choices that she would make and support her and she would continue to be around and, and all that good stuff. So uh, it was a win-win because, you know, for us, um, 
you know, being around and the way that she gives of herself to her teammates. I mean, she's incredible. And, um, you know, obviously we're all happy. I think it's great for the league that Sylvia Fowles is still in it and uh, will no doubt be an MVP candidate in her final season. That's a, that's a testament to Syl that, that she can put, still put herself defensive player of the year and MVP. Are you kidding me? I mean, that's, that's good stuff. We'll go last question to Kent. I talked with Syl briefly yesterday and I mentioned that she's probably in, in line for a farewell tour, the likes of which the WNBA NBA hasn't probably seen a lot of. And she made that sound like it was the well, worst case scenario <laughs> for her. She just thought that was... She doesn't want any of it. Akin to torture. Yeah, I told her too bad. Too bad. Too <laughs> I mean, bad. is that basically what you do? Is you just say, well, yeah, too, bad. too bad. Too bad. Yeah. You, know, you have to because Syl deserves everything uh, coming her way in this final final season. And, you know, it started with her coming in the office like she always does um, every day. We have the same routine with Syl. And she bangs on the door in our staff meeting and she pops in. And, and the, 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 I said, happy last first day. And this is going to be like pretty much all the time. This is your last time doing this. Your last. I'm sure that we get to a certain point. You're going to say, just stop it. You know, let me just enjoy it. And that's what we want still to do is just enjoy the heck out of it. Um, I, I think there will be other cities that we go to. We'll, we'll honor and, you know, tribute um, Sil's career and she'll deserve all of it. And I hope, I hope that, you know, we all go crazy at every, every turn because she deserves every bit of that. And, and um, you know, so no, I, I've yet to be emotional. I, I'm happy. I'm at peace. Um, <laughs> now talk to me the last game. <laughs> Do what without Syl ever? Um, but I think that Syl's the type that she wants to do for others. That's her love language, doing for others, not people doing for her. And so with that, you know, those, those moments are, are hard for her. But as I said, you know, too bad. We're, we're going to do it anyway.